faith is incredible. So John 3, 5 makes it clear. I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the Spirit. So if you haven't been baptized, I want you to uh, come and meet somebody this morning and uh, we can arrange that for you. Um, but let's go to Deuteronomy. I just want to talk about Revelation for a couple of minutes. Revelation 29 uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 29, 29. I'm talking about Revelation, our Revelation resource. It's just something I, I was talking to our regional pastors the other day and it sort of, it came to me at the time. I hadn't thought of it before. I'd never thought about it before, this whole thing of Revelation. Deuteronomy 29, 29. There are secret things that belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things belong to us and our descendants forever so that we may obey these words of the Lord. Now, it's very clear from what Jesus said about us, you know, when you, when you become a Christian, when you become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are born again, or born from above is a better title, when you're born from above, that is by revelation. It's a revelation from God. So you have all had a revelation. If you've met the Lord Jesus Christ, you've had a spiritual revelation. You cannot be saved without it. Your eyes were opened, you know, the light came in. Your eyes were opened to a spiritual reality. And uh, for me, you know, uh, meeting Jesus was the most powerful, incredible thing. I didn't believe in the supernatural. So when I suddenly found myself in the presence of a supernatural and amazing God, I declared right then that that's the way I was going to live. I didn't want to live any other way than by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to understand that when we have revelation, it becomes our possession, yeah? Yeah. So we begin to build a resource of revelation. Not like we're all sort of like walking along, oh, I need a revelation, I need a revelation. God has given you revelation in certain areas and you know that you can go back there and that's part of who you are. The places I know I can go into that have been a revelation to me and they're still mine. I don't have a revelation and then it's not like a flow that goes through us and disappears out the other end. It becomes a deposit in our lives. It's like adding gifts and talents to our lives naturally. Every time you hear something from God by revelation, you need to dwell on it and make it your own. When God speaks to you about something, you need to step into it and make it your own because it's not just for you. You're going to be able to pass it on to your kids. It's amazing what we gain spiritually, our kids seem to enter into so easily. They step into it. What we gain as church, we see the next generation coming through church. They just step into the things that we battled for. They become our possession. You look at the, uh, the renewal of the church over the whole renewal period that we see, you know, uh, we see the, the water baptism and the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Holy Spirit all being restored. Some people battled for those truths, but now we step in and say, thank you, Jesus, and we receive them because they're part of our corporate heritage by revelation that we have. And so we live our lives by revelation. You need to understand when you read the word of God, God wants to give you revelation in the situation that you're facing right now. Because victory comes from revelation. Success comes from revelation. If you're in the midst of a business situation right now and you don't know which way is up because things are a little bit difficult at the moment, what you need is some revelation from God to open up a new way for you to approach what you're doing in the midst of that incredible difficulty. God can show you a new way. If you're facing a situation that is impossible, God's got a revelation for you that will not only be for you but that will birth ministry in you that you can help others walk through the same spot amen and so revelation is the key that's that's the most amazing thing that happened when we were born again our eyes were open to the supernatural realm and the supernatural is higher than the natural we can change things when we go into the supernatural dimension we can bring natural change with the power of prayer and of declaration and the revelation of the word of God look your quiet time is not a quiet time well look I need to read the Bible because I need to know the Bible you need to meet Jesus in the Bible you need to get the word of God speaking into your life there needs to be desperation when you come into that word, say, Lord, would you speak to me? I want my life to be enlarged. I want the resource. I want you to enlarge the place of my tent, the influence of my life. He'll do that as God speaks into your life. Is that, is that good stuff this morning? Amen? And uh, it's my revelation. We're going to explore this over the coming weeks. It becomes a growing heritage. Psalm 139 and verses 17 and 18. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They are innumerable. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Isn't that fantastic? They outnumber the grains of sand. 
Wow, I can't even count them. When I wake up in the morning, you're still with me. There is a constant flow into your life. There's a constant flow from the heart of God towards you. He's thinking about you 24-7. He's having great ideas for you 24-7. He's wanting to open your eyes to amazing possibilities 24-7. He's wanting to speak into your life. He's wanting to tell you how much he loves you. He wants to unlock some of the potential that's inside of you. He wants to enlarge your influence. He wants to prosper you and do you good. Like there's this constant flow. He's saying, hey, just tune in. Just tune in. My plans for you are good. They're incredible. Now, there may be some of you here this morning and think, well, you know, I, I don't really believe that I'm in that supernatural realm. There's only one way to get there. That's by Jesus, yeah? You need to be born from above. You need the power of God to come upon you, to close the past, and to start a new beginning. Uh, in the Gospel of John, John 1.12, he said, To as many as received him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the faith dimension where we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave the power or the authority to become sons of God. We haven't arrived yet. We're still becoming, yeah? That's why, you know, um, I'm persuaded that it's better to, to be a follower of Jesus than just to call yourself a Christian because we're on a journey. We are becoming. We are becoming. When we see him, we'll be like him. It's a fantastic journey, but it has to have a beginning, yeah? It ha there has to be a moment when we begin. Or perhaps you're here this morning and you, you'd sort of begun, but had all the excitement and the wonder, but you've become a little bit religious along the way. So, sort of, well, I sort of, you know, I go to church. And my greatest fear, you know what my greatest fear is? Is that people come and sit in church on Sunday and don't know what God's got for them. That, that Sunday's cool, it's great, but Monday through Saturday they're not experiencing the fullness that God intended for their lives. And my, my desire is to awaken you to who you are in Christ, to the incredible life that he has for you. I'd hate to think that some of you were becoming sort of like religious Christians. You know, we do church, we do our quiet time every now and again through a sort of a guilt trip we feel like we should talk to somebody about Jesus I want you to experience the flow and the joy and the, the vital, the real abundant life that comes from following Jesus and if you're not in that slot this morning I, I really stand with them thank you Jesus, thank you Father God you're an awesome God, you're an incredible Lord, we thank you Lord ah oh, for your amazing goodness